Hey guys, Masako X here, and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I asked you guys whether you'd like to see a tier list about Dragon Ball movies, and you guys seem pretty down for it. Now, I originally got this idea from one of the channels I subscribe to called Bren Daniel. He did a tier list about his favorite Mountain Dew drinks, and I recommend go and watch that because it was a lot of fun, and it really inspired me to do this video because... I know that the Team 4 Star guys did a top 24 Dragon Ball movies and specials, but I really couldn't make a list, like a quantifiable list. So, with the advent of tier lists, this provided by Know Your Meme, this template by the way, you can go and check it out, I thought I'd try and come up with a tier list instead of a, a top 24 list, or a top 20, or a top 10, top 5, whatever. Tier list, bit more modern, so let's get to it. So alright, let's kick something off by doing some kind of barometer. Like some kind of barometer to kind of give us like an idea about where we can go from here. And uh, I think I have the perfect barometer right here. Uh, yeah, this little character, Dragon Ball Evolution, this is going down in the D to E category. Okay, I'm just judging you. Yeah, no, that's a straight up E. That's straight up E, F. Like... It's not the worst thing, although it did kind of make me almost quit Dragon Ball entirely. But it did have some redeeming qualities in the second half. Like, you could tell that some of the characters and actors were trying. So I'm just going to throw Evolution in down here. So is it just all the way up from there? Well, you have to wait and find out. So don't think of clicking off this video. You're going to have to see the whole thing. So first off, let's do Curse of the Blood Rubies. Now, this one here is the first Dragon Ball movie. Truth be told, the first Dragon Ball movies, the three, first three ones, I'm not really overtly familiar with them. I, I've seen them once, but that was a long time ago. So I'm just going to give, like, my impression from what I remember. So Curse of the Blood Rubies is essentially, like, an initial retelling you introduced to the initial characters at first, and then you add some extra things here with Gourmet, for example. So I have to admit, you know, it was an alright time. So I'd probably give this, I think this is like the average. So then you have Sleeping Princess in Devil's Castle. So this one here, this one was a bit zany. I must admit it was quite bold in its approach with what Lucifer, the bad guy in this one, actually having his idea. It was quite nefarious, but not as overly interesting. So I probably have to give this one like a D, D tier. Nah, that's a little too harsh. C, D. Suck like it's a C minus. This marking scheme going by what Brent Daniel did as well. So just giving all credit where credit's due. So this one is Mystical Adventure. Now this is kind of similar to Curse of the Blood Rubies. And again, I don't remember much of it. But from what I do remember, it was pretty alright. You know, it had some good times. It had good, all things all round. So I pretty much do that as a C tier. So really, the three Dragon Ball movies did okay. They did okay for what they wanted to do, The Dead Zone. Now, this one wasn't the first Dragon Ball Z movie that I saw. That honor goes to Cooler's Revenge, movie five. But we'll get to that in a moment. From what I remember, it was quite simplistic. It gave some very good ideas about what to expect from Dragon Ball, but still had that really nice kung fu adventure style type of adventure. This is kind of like, if you watch the first three Dragon Ball movies, this is very similar to what it is, only with a little bit more Let's say scope or something like that. Plus you get Gohan, Goku's kid. I remember this pretty well, and if Vegito EX from Kanzenshi was watching, don't worry, your boy, your boy's a B tier. Yeah, Dead Zone's a B tier movie for me. It was pretty good, very nice, very nice and straightforward. So let's go on to The World's Strongest. Now this one I remember watching and I was very impressed by this. I really did like it because it was again, more of the same with Dead Zone. I'd have to say this is another B, B tier movie. Because I will never forget Peter Columbus's Kaioken scream and just all of the choreography. It was very much like Dead Zone. So I guess that goes there too. Now moving on to uh, Tree of Might. Oh, Tree of Might. Tell us it's all very well and good. And of course, we have the big green theme, of course. <laughs> we can't forget about big green. We're not allowed to as Dragon Ball fans. So I would have to say that Tree of Might wasn't as good it wasn't as good as these first two dead zone world strongest so i'd have to say mm, it's a b c tier yeah i'd say it's a b c tier for me it was it was good turles 
you get, you know, the Tree of Might. You then, of course, have the Spirit Bomb. That's pretty much what you get from there. That was originally attributed in World's Strongest. You get it again here. So, okay, you think, mm, okay, I've seen that in World's Strongest. Mm, it's all right. But still, it is very well done, and it looks pretty cool. So it still gets a very, very decent score. It's a very decent boy. Now, okay, I'm counting specials here, as you've seen. Now, the Bardock special. Bardock, Father of Goku. Now, this one... I, that's a, that's a straight A tier. That is a straight A tier right there. Bardock Father of Goku was perfect in the fact that it was a very bleak story. It was very interesting and you got it after the fact. And it was something that Toriyama didn't originally conceptualize, but he loved it so much, he then introduced it to the manga. So the anime team did a very good job here. And if they were able to impress Toriyama, I think you can impress a lot of people that are Dragon Ball fans. And I know that Dragon Ball Super Broly and Dragon Ball Minus have kind of superseded it these days, but it's still something that if you are a Dragon Ball fan and you are just getting into Z, this is something that you've got to see. So, yeah. A tier, first A tier movie right here. Now, we are going way down with Lord Slug. Lord Slug, I remember watching this not too long after the Coolum movie. I was not impressed. It seemed a bit lackluster. And yeah, I like the whole nuance about Piccolo and whistling with Gohan. That was a cool plot point. But you got the spirit bomb again. And then you got Lord Slug. And yes, okay, it's cool to see a giant Namekian. And it would have been even better if you were more au fait with Dragon Ball, the original series. You saw Piccolo Giant. But I haven't watched Dragon Ball at the time. So it was kind of like, oh, okay, that, that's kind of cool. But just the overall vibe, just, I don't know. It just really wasn't going it with me. And I don't know whether it was just the dub with the heavy metal guitar soundtrack or something like that, but I would say that's a D-list. It's it's not the worst, but it's just not memorable for me, to be honest. Now, okay. Now this, this is the first movie of DBC that I ever watched, and that is Cool's Revenge, movie five. Now this one, it's good. I would say it's, uh, it's pretty much there with Tree of Might. B, C tier, it's pretty good. It was a lot of fun getting to see Cooler and Cooler actually going, well, okay, Freezer was a very roundabout kind of person. I'm going to be a bit more methodical. And you also saw a brand new form. Okay, that's pretty sweet. And you also get to see Super Saiyan Goku again. And really, really kicking butt. That right there is pretty good. Okay, yeah, all right, all right. No, that, that's a B. I, I was being too harsh. That's a B tier movie. Okay, one that isn't as, you know, you know, like B tier. No, no, no. I'm very more defiant with this. No, no, this is an E tier movie. I'm sorry. I, I liked this movie back in the past. I really did. Especially after seeing the first Cooler movie. But now I look back at it, and especially working on the TFS DBZ abridged movie version of this. Yeah, the animation was not good at all. And the plot just seemed really silly. The big Getty star, really... It was a really kind of artificial way, <laughs> you know, artificial body of Cooler. It just seemed a bit mm, tenuous, something like that. I would, no, I didn't have much of a good time with this. It, it just wasn't for me, to be honest. But, you know, having to hit them really hard, really, and then just, yeah, okay. The visual of seeing the thousand Cooler soldiers, yeah, that was pretty cool. I will give it that. Again, all of these movies have really cool elements about them, but... Yeah, it just didn't really bring the whole package together, I'm afraid. Just the the presentation was lacking. Now, Super Android 13. Ah, uh, yes, that. I would say that's a C to D tier for me, because we're getting that idea of, again, the animation wasn't the best, but you saw three Super Saiyans. You saw, okay, you saw the Spirit Bomb again, but you saw it being absorbed into Super Saiyan, that final visual, whoa, that's intense. Yeah, okay, I'll give it that. And of course, you know, more androids at a time when androids were cool. And yeah, I had a good time with it. It was all right. 14 and 15 were a bit forgettable, but 13 was pretty all right. But it could have been better. Let's just say that. Uh, the dub did make it a bit more endearing with, you know, with what Chuck Cuba did for Android 13, I will say. So... Yeah, just make it a little smaller, and yeah, it was okay. It was slightly below average, but pretty good. 
Okay, the Broly movie, the first Broly movie. Now, you want me to think that, oh, Masako, you're going to make that E.T. movie because the second Broly movie was way better. You know, the Dragon Ball Super Broly one. Uh, no, I would say it's slightly... Oof, slightly... Oof. I would say probably that. It's almost a C-tier movie for me because... Yeah, the Broly premise is really, really silly, but the rest of the package is really good. It's a little long. You know, okay, if you made the movie 20 minutes shorter, and you made the premise of Broly like it is in the newest movie about Vegeta and that resentment, it could easily be a B tier or even somewhere near A tier. It was just that premise. I'm sorry, I cannot get over it. It's just... It's okay. It's an okay time. I can look the other way with the whole Broly premise, but you can't deny it. It is a little silly. I'm sorry. It's just about... It's just on the cusp of the sea. It's just... It's a little bit below average. Now. History of Trunks. Again. This is an A tier. This is A tier because, again, I don't know what it is about the TV specials, but the TV specials are extremely bleak. And it was really, really galling when you see future Trunks and you think, okay, that's where he was coming from. That was not a good time. So whatever kind of situation he is in the past, it's got to be better when than where he was coming from, right? But there you go. I'm putting History of Trunks up a list because it was something unexpected. It filled in a lot of gaps. The animation was superb considering it was a TV special, not a movie. It just had the right package. And... You really had empathy for the characters, and you really understood why Trunks came to the past. It wasn't just, oh, Toriyama just likes Terminator and having John Connor and something like that. No. What they managed to come up with here, maybe with some Toriyama help, was something really, really emotional and really thought-provoking. But yeah, A-tier, definitely. Those two, mm, A-tier. Now, Bojack. Yar, Bojack. Uh... I've only seen this movie once, and i maybe seen a little bit of it, maybe for a second time. Didn't quite get all the way through. Uh, I'm probably going to put this just a teensy bit above C tier. Like, it's wanting to poke up into B tier because it has Gohan in it. And I like the fact that they didn't really rely on Goku that much. It was the first movie in Dragon Ball Z's history that Goku wasn't the main factor in here. He was in it some time, but he wasn't the one to pull off the main deed. That was Gohan. And that was Gohan accepting his role as Defender of the Earth. That was pretty cool. And you got to see Super Saiyan 2 Gohan in Goku's Gi. There you go. Good fan service. And man, Trunks. Woo! Now, second coming. I have now seen this movie. It is not good. It is an e. Okay, slightly maybe, slightly better than the than the second cooler movie. Slightly better, but it's just forgettable. I just forgot about it. It's like, oh, okay, Broly's come back. He cannot talk much. He's gone crazy. The Dell can actually hold her own against him, which is cool, but slightly silly. And then Gohan shows up, and then that's pretty much it. Right, yeah, forgettable. Bio Broly. Bio Broly here. I'm going to put this in uh, slightly better. Slightly better than the second coming movie. It's not the best movie. Goten then tries to get a little bit grating, but what saves this movie for me? Krillin and 18. They have such great moments. 18 and, you know, Hercule. Those two together. Oh, that first half of that movie is great. It's so much fun, really interesting and engaging. And really... Broly becoming a blob? Alright. Had the first half not been as good, it would probably be E tier as well. Now, okay. Easiest decision. Fusion Reborn, S tier, S tier, absolutely right. No doubt about it. Animation was superb. Gogeta, uh, Janemba. The, uh, just, it looks gorgeous. And just the premise is wacky. And just, whoa, beautiful. Wrath of the Dragon, movie 13. This one... I would say I'm going to stick up here poking into A tier because the the premise is pretty cool. Tapion and his little brother, the name escapes me right now. But 
that premise was so cool. And yes, the idea of Trunks getting his sword from Tapion was pretty nonsensical. But you just think at the time, as soon as you first see that movie for the first time, and every time you see it, you think, oh, that's so cool. And yeah, of course, you get Super Saiyan 3, you get the Dragon Fist, you get so many iconic moments. Not to mention the first one with Harudagon. Whoa. Kaiju? Skeleton Kaiju? Harudagon's first form is horrifying. And that makes it impactful. So yeah, I would say mostly B tier. Touching on the A tier. That, that, that's what I'd say. Now, okay, going to episode of Bardock. I'm sorry. That is going to be... Uh, I'm going to put... I'm running out of space here. So much Dragon Ball. Uh, ooh, uh, mostly E tier. Poking a teensy bit into F because it was nonsensical. The animation was not the best. Bardock being a legendary Super Saiyan was a decent twist, but again, doesn't really make sense. You know, time travel. Dragon Ball time travel doesn't really mix. Ah, uh, yeah. Lord Chill was alright. It had some decent moments. That's keeping it off the F tier. But it's just not something I really remember well, nor do I really want to go back to. Xenoverse 2 did a better job, if I'm honest. Path to Power is technically the fourth Dragon Ball movie. But the animation is gorgeous. And granted, it's, it is a retelling, so I can't be too... I can't be too, you know, nice to it because I, I don't want to be biased or double standards because I, I criticized the, you know, movies one and three of Dragon Ball for the same thing. So I'm putting this almost in B tier, but slightly bringing it back down to C because it is a retelling, but it is a gorgeous retelling. Battle of Gods. Battle of Gods. Okay. That is an, that is, uh, that is on the cusp of S tier. That is like an A S tier because it was a movie we were not expecting much from this at all. The fact it was a Dragon Ball movie after nearly two decades, you think, okay, I'm, ooh, I'm gonna take this movie. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna accept it. It's gonna be a fun time. I'm just gonna roll with it. And you think, woo, that really, uh, that really blew expectations. Beautiful, good times, good times. That was a very memorable time. Yeah, and A S tier, absolutely. Now, Resurrection F. Resurrection F has not aged well. Battle of Gods has definitely aged well. Uh, but no. Resurrection F is a C to D tier for me. Because, actually, you know what? I'm going to be like, mm, no. That's almost a D tier movie for me. Because it's not really memorable. Because I watched this movie with my friend Asagi right before we went to see the Broly movie for the fourth time. And it was just like... I don't know. It's just not really memorable. It's just a fight. Super Saiyan Blue's debut is so lackluster. It just really does not stand the test of time that well. And its super arc equivalent is even worse. It's just no. It, it's not aged well. Had this been like... If I'd done this tier list back in 2016, 2015, it probably would be like, you know, somewhere around here because the visuals are gorgeous. It's a lot of fun. And I had a fun time when I went to see it in 2015. But now, after a few years, no, it's like almost D tier for me. So unfortunately, Resurrection F is down there. Now, movie 16. Dragon Ball Super Broly. Oh, oh, no question. This is, this is going to be slightly better than Battle of Gods. Because I've seen this movie four times in the cinema. And I plan to buy it. I, no, this is something that has reinvigorated Super. And it's got people going. It fixed Broly, something that was practically impossible. But it's still not as good as Fusion Reborn in my eyes. Ugh. You know, okay, no, I'm being too harsh here. I'm being too harsh here. Uh, it's pretty much almost S tier. It's pretty much almost S tier for me. It's like that. This could change over time if we get a new series of Super, if, or we get a couple of new movies, it might move down. But for now, this is pretty much where I stand. It's my second favorite Dragon Ball movie. Now, okay, we're going to specials. Plan to eradicate the Super Saiyans that was bundled in with Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. Uh, no, E tier. E tier. I'm sorry, but it's just not really memorable. Hachiak is okay, but it's a very throwaway plot. It's just nothing special. Yo, Son Goku and his friends return. Now, this was the first hint that there was going to be new Dragon Ball content. We didn't get this in the West, but I did see it many moons ago. 
and I've not seen it for nearly a decade. But from what I remember, it was a pretty good time. It was like, I'd say that's a C. It was solid, new animation, the pastel effect was pretty cool. Tarble, an interesting plot twist. I'd say that was a C. <laughs> Finally, a hero's legacy. Dragon Ball GT, we're nearly there guys. So, hero's legacy, mm, I'm probably gonna put it almost in C tier. So it goes almost in the middle because the animation is good. Dragon Ball GT's animation was pretty good for the most part. And the hero's legacy of Goku Jr. trying to discover his Saiyan roots, it was pretty cute. And getting to see Goku come back to him and actually give him advice, that was pretty neat too. Yeah, I know, I, I know, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, Master Ko, but why is it better than Lord Slug? Why is it better than Resurrection F? I don't know. It's just something about it. Like, Resurrection F has not aged well. This is pretty much Hell Station. I don't want to watch it again, but I'm glad that I did. Yeah, there you go. I don't know whether this is going to be your list, but you can find this tier list on here. So if you go to my subreddit, r slash masterquex, you can share your tier list. And I'd very much like to see them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I know this might have been a, bit, a little bit on the long side, but again, trying something different from the channel. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Check out all the other videos on this channel. Until next time, guys, catch you later, and have a good one.